So exercise three, I will talk you through that and I will once again share my JavaView application screen. First two steps of the exercise were to download some VCF data. I've already done that, so I have that sitting on my computer. What is the format here? Well, it's it's VCF data, which is verbose and, and can be quite large text files. First file is GZ, so it's zipped, makes it rather smaller, but it's still pretty big because human genome is a big thing. And the second file is an index, is a TBI file, which is a tab index. And JLV is able to exploit the, the index and the zipping to do fast access to retrieve the VCF data for a given locus of interest. We claim no credit for that. We, we reuse the code from the HTS JDK project uh, that does that beautifully for us. So what this means is if you download it, as one of my colleagues in Dundee has, the entire human genome at exome data set, you can just query that from GRV and it's fast, um, regardless of which particular gene you're, you're working on. So what does this mean? So I've, I've downloaded that VCF data to a local area, so this is not something we query over the internet from GRV too big, too slow, but we can go to Ensemble, so I'm going to OK that, and I've re retrieved this uh, particular gene and its transcripts. Let's just take a few seconds. Right, so this is hopefully beginning to look familiar. We have the gene across the top and the transcripts underneath, and we have exons, and in red we have some sequence variants. So these are the basic variant data supplied by Ensemble itself, but we're going to enrich that now. If I go to the file menu, down the bottom, is a menu option called load VCF file. Brings up a file browser. Hurrah, so I can now browse to my downloads folder. And I'm just going to pick the, the TBI, the tab index file. Or indeed, I can pick the gzip file. It will work either way around. It will, if I pick the gzip, it'll look for the index and vice versa. So I get the index file. I say open that. And we can see, hopefully, in your status bar, loading VCS variants. It's going to take about 10 seconds or so to churn through these. And there we go, added 2,298 VCF variants to 11 sequences. It's found some data. Um, cool. How do we see these? What do we do with them? Well, again, from the view menu, I can go back to my feature settings and bring up what I like to think of as, as the master control panel for visualization in JavaView. We can still see we've got sequence variant X on CDS available, but there's a new group has appeared, which is the VCF group. So some of these sequence variants have come from Ensemble and some from VCF file we just made. So I will turn the other group off. So I'm now only showing VCF. You can see that the features types for CDS and X on are no longer there because they don't come with VCF. The only thing you get with VCF is sequence variant. Next step in the exercise, and we're going to hide all columns that do not contain a variant. So if I right click in the feature settings on the sequence variant, you get a pop up menu. One of the options is hide columns that do not contain. Wow, hopefully you can see that. These blue lines all mark hidden regions, hidden columns of that alignment. So the only columns left displayed, this is just for conciseness of displaying the effects here are the ones containing sequence variants. We can now play with a thing on the feature settings called color transparency slider, which I'm going to drag backwards and forwards. What are we doing here? If you remember, we, we've seen that when you have more than one feature at one position, you can choose which is on top. So some, sometimes you can get a feature that's hidden below another one. You have a green on top or blue. With, with the transparency, we can actually blend these feature colors together so we can start to see a little bit more information into what's happening here. If we fade it away down, there will be places where it's getting pretty faint and places where it's less faint. If I mouse over these positions with darker coloring, if I put my mouse over them, I can see on my tooltip there's more than one variant. So we're blending the color of two or more variants together to get a stronger color. So that already gives us a little bit of insight into where we have a heavier burden of variation in the transcript sequences. So this is very rich data. I will undo the, the hidden column effect. And I'm going to get up the, the protein view as well. And I will 
show the variant features on the protein. So I might prefer to look at things from this perspective, but it's and basically I am able to do the same things I can do in the exercise on the transcript. In particular, if I right click on one of these positions, I can ask it to show me feature details. Now, when we saw this table, this is one, one single variant detail. When we fetched this data from Ensemble, we got about four or five different fields in here, like clinical significance and consequence. When we get it from VCF, we get a shed load of stuff. We filtered out here anything that's null or zero. These are the fields that are actually populated. So we have allele count fields for different populations. We have allele frequencies for different populations. There are simple ways in JavaView to filter down to the only picking up the fields of interest to you. Here we're just by default picking up everything. There's a lot of stuff that we can choose to filter on because if you remember, we were showing earlier only variant features that were pathogenic or likely pathogenic. So that was one example of a filter. If I look at something like allele frequency, we have allele frequency. I would expect to see it by population, but in this particular case, I'm not seeing it by population. Let's pick another one. Oh, it's a, that's a stop gained. Oh, interesting. Consequence type stop gained. Let's have a little play with that. Supposing I want to explore stop gained features. I'm going to put a condition on here, which is that the consequence type contains stop. And that has limited my display to only those features, if I've done it correctly, which have a, a stop gain, so premature end of the peptide, which is pretty well likely to be deleterious to the peptide. So one last thing I would like to show potentially is Perhaps remove that feature and show you that we can also do filtering on numerical ranges. So we might, supposing I'm interested in allele frequencies in Finnish populations, I can see that the allele frequency goes from 0 to 0 0.95. Let's go for greater than because almost all of them are going to be less than. So I'll just to make something happen, I'll go for greater than. Okay. So uh, that's a pretty strict filter. Very, not very much has actually uh, matched that, but it does shows me here's something which has a high frequency in Finnish populations. And I can confirm that by opening up the feature details table, scrolling down to allele frequency, Finnish value 0.725. We have a, a very flexible system here. You can focus in on the rich data of VCF and set up filters and covering schemes which enable you to explore the, the attributes of interest to you. But I hopefully you get the idea that all of this can be transferred to structure if there is a structure.